Hey, Matt. Hey. Super Smash Brothers. Look forward to it? Yeah. Yes! Okay, never mind. Hey, Jeremy. You looking forward to Super Smash Brothers? Sharky, what about you, man? It's a ROM hack, right? Yeah, I'll, I'll give it a spin. Gotta see if my Mario can still kick ass like in the N64 days. I'll, I'll try it multiplayer. I want that WarioWare stage. Jen, Jen, Jen. What? What? Are you looking forward to Super Smash Brothers? Yes. Moderately. Adventure mode? Not at all. Not as much as Soul Calibur. <laughs> Fuck yeah! Rob, Rob, Rob. Are you excited for Super Smash Brothers? What's that? Say sorry, what about you, man? Wait, what? Yes, no. Yes, yes. Hey, Mike, you're looking forward to Super Smash Brothers, right? Well, I was looking forward to it until I found out that Ganondorf is actually a clone of Falco. Hell yes. Oh, fuck yeah. Like, Ridley's not in the game as a playable character. Hell yeah. Yeah, no. I love cartoons. Actually, I don't even want to talk about this anymore because it's fucking pissing me off, so could you go away? You know, I like real fighters. Am I looking forward to it? Yeah. yeah. Response is mixed. Looks like we're going to have to cover it. People care. Okay, fuck it, we'll cover it then. first had the idea to, uh, to do the HD res, like, how did you bring that up to Sega and kind of, you know, what were they, did, were they into it right away or were they like, well, that's kind of... Yeah, I, <laughs> I went to Sega and uh, I asked to the Sega's management, current management, I want you to make up you know, the res in a high def, high res yeah. condition. And that, that was easy. Uh, we had a uh, license from Sega, and uh, we invested ourselves and uh, work with the uh, Hexadrive. Right? We were posting on message board saying like, you know, I had Rez, I had it on PS2 or Dreamcast or whatever, and I played it to death. I cannot, and I played it for years, and I cannot imagine buying another version and, and playing it even more. And all I have to say to those people is like, you have not played Rez yet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I just couldn't you know, believe how clean yeah. it looked. Yeah. Like when yeah. I when I was playing through it, I, the whole time I was like, "Wow, wow, mm -hmm. wow!" Like yeah. this is fucking awesome. This is what the game should it's, have always looked it's like. It's so clean now that it actually feels like they're real vector graphics. You know, right. yeah. it, not just wireframes. Right. You know, like outlines right. you know, floating across right. the screen or yeah, whatever. They're not just like polygons that are done up ghetto style to look like like vector graphics. Right. Now it looks like vector right. graphics. One thing we were talking with Miz about too is like, like, you know, I like asked like, you know, was was Rez maybe inspired by the Underworld Rez song and stuff like that, or did they try to use those kind of songs in it too? Uh, we had many reasons, uh, uh, you know, that was the, those kind of the experiment, mm -hmm. you know, using um, the uh, like, uh, you know, the, the famous music, 
and um, but we tested and I felt you know the music has all music has you know the reason people wants to dance people wants to sing mm -hmm. you know and I, I tried I always you know you know finding the music for you know very suitable music for the game this game and um, so the result um, I gave up to use that kind of music because um, it's very really good but um, you know um, it's not that music uh, in the reason uh, you know, for the game you know so I need the catharsis of the game mm -hmm. you know so you know the, in a call and response process I'm hoping that people will you know if they download res and they play the build that they will start to see you know like we see it in a larger historical context it's kind of you know opening up this floodgate for this type of gameplay that just didn't exist beforehand and you know not just in terms of, of music games and not just in terms of you know like nailing a specific thing but I mean just in terms of you know synesthesia it's just the kind of thing that you know gaming is perfect for and I think as you know as we're currently writing the history of the art form as as the years go on we're going to look back at res as kind of the the first real demonstration that the gaming medium the gaming art space is the best space for that kind of experience right no i, I agree i think it i think it really is like one of the most important games of like the last decade or so you know it really you know, it was the first, I, I think it was like pretty much the first time when you could actually, you know, create, first time you could create music by interacting in a game. One thing we were talking about with Miz was like, you know, I, we asked like, are they going to do, you know, maybe a, a downloadable skit track, you know, whatever like that. And, you know, just because, you know, they had, they had done that with Luminous and stuff. Um, you know, he said definitely not. Like he said that this game was, you know, was this one, this was like a complete experience when it came out. He did not want to ever like, change that. Besides um, like, yeah, why, why split the market when you want to save those? Like if you have a new idea, I'm sure they want to save it for Res too. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. well, that was what he said too. He was like, you know, if, if, if I'm going to focus on any effort into res I want to make it on a new res mm -hmm. and um, you know he was also saying that he wanted to maybe take advantage of today's technology a little bit more I want to make a you know this kind of a, the new frontier new experience with music and the visual and not only art power uh, now I'm thinking about the you know the using the programming power um, you know, to go uh, to beyond the next stage and the next mm. level. Didn't you say, well, aren't you going to put this on PS3? And he was like, no, this is like an Xbox 3. This is the right audience for an Xbox 360. Um, so, uh, there's no reason, you know, uh, to release this game on the other platforms. But we just, you know, um, felt just, you know, start right right restart and um so, so there we, might be more with res in the like yeah. and uh yeah we felt the xbox 360 is the, the best platform you know um providing this game on xbla right once you start having to make packaging and produce discs and get it out to retail there's a big like you know, win-loss scenario, it's like... It I'm, I'm actually really glad that Hugh is so on the forefront of all that stuff. Like, you know, having done Luminez, having done uh, every extend, and now having done Res. Like, I, I don't... Hugh is the exact developer. Like, the, I don't need them to ever put out a retail disc ever again. <laughs> yeah. I would love Res 2 to come out from the get-go as a network title. Downloadable. Mm -hmm. Downloadable. On, yeah, to your <laughs> mind. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and, and I'm glad that, that, you know, that might actually be an option for them. If they could do a sequel to Res that was a download game instead of a retail product and yeah. that came out and it went into everyone's hands, I think it would be huge.
Some people I know have owned the game for like five years and have never unlocked Area 5. Oh wow. See, and then they, they are missing out on and the entire point of the game. Because really that's, that's where it all, where it all really all comes together. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 it's weird when I hear yeah. that because I never would expect that people haven't unlocked. I mean, to me, after you know playing Area, Area 5 is the game to yeah. me. Like, yeah. if I go back and I don't have like time to else, sit through the whole game, yeah. I'll just play Area right. 5. And that's the part of Res that I really wanted to experience. Yeah. Like those yeah. playing the original one, that's like having dinner with no dessert. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you really have to, because I mean, every, th every area one through four is all like the Goa trance, all mm -hmm. that really high speed stuff. Mm -hmm. But then like when you get to area five, the, the beats knuckle down, it's just nasty, yeah. raunchy, and dirty. <laughs> that track is dirty as fuck. Killer. You know what I love about level five though too is that like you know I'm I'm a big fan of that that song the fear is a mind killer song I think yeah, we all are yeah, but yeah, like totally. the best version of that song is the one that you play in yeah. it. It's a real study in contrast because it's hammering you with this, these beats and once you beat one form, you know, all of a sudden it, it clears out, a new message comes out, you know, by the time you finally, 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 finally beat the game, you know, and you've got all this, like, video coming in and, like, you know, you look like you're viewing the planet from outer space, it's just like, it's such an awesome experience. Super size a Happy Meal for a week, you know? There you go, <laughs> boom, 10 bucks. No reason not so to have good. it. Matt, Matt. So, do we have Super Smash Brothers in yet? Not yet, no. Uh, are we gonna get it in soon? Cause we wanna do it on the show, cover it, you know? I'd say yes. But do we know when we're gonna get it in, the import? Uh, coming up pretty soon, probably a couple days, maybe Friday, hard to say. Can we get that for the show? We, you know, we want to do some coverage on it, obviously. Uh, it, it looks likely. Uh, well, when would that be? Let's see how long it takes me to unlock stuff. Okay, so not too soon then. Okay. Um, I'll try my luck elsewhere. Okay. Let your arms So when you think about video games, I think the last thing you think about is relaxation. You know, it's pretty much, every game stimulates you in some sort of way. And it's not that this game doesn't stimulate your mind, because it does. In fact, we've talked about how we think it could even be a teaching tool. With this game, you can sit down, you can hold the controller, you start playing, and it relaxes you. It's so different than any other game that I've played. When you're, when you're done, it's not like, you know, there's some hard line here that says, all right, you cross that line, now you're done. It's just like, I'm satisfied. I thought they might just drop you in the ocean and say swim, you know, figure it out. But there is a healthy dose of Japanese game structure like built on top of this. I mean, you have your boat, which is the like hub where you can do various things like change your outfits and look at your inventory and you mm -hmm. talk to a cat who, uh, you know, gives you new missions and is one of the major sources aside from those males of, of the narrative throughout the game. You know, you do this dive request or you or you will um, you'll do a photo request or a cat will say, hey, why don't you explore this area? Mm -hmm. And you find something. And when you find it, you can tell like, oh, this this was a big thing. And cat will actually radio down to you and say, hey, you found a such and such. We should get that back up to the boat and analyze it. Right. But take your time. can go anywhere on the on your map that you want to go at any time mm -hmm. and you're still gonna feel that sort of single-player game progression because the game unlocks 
the things that you wanted to unlock when you get there. Exactly. interacting with them, you're poking them, you're stroking them, you're feeding them, you're using your light pen, you're blowing the underwater whistle, all sure. these things to, to get their attention so you can learn more about them. And then occasionally when you encounter uh, a truly uh, a truly epic underwater sea creature, usually the really large ones, but not always. Sometimes it's a really small one that's hard to find. Right. But you find this really large creature and you see it and it, and it stops the game. It makes you take in what you're watching. And you'll generally do it with your jaw drop. Right. And when it goes, when that cut screen ends, you'll go swimming after it, and you'll pet it or whatever, just trying to see what it is. And then you'll probably try to grab onto it, and you'll just sit there and you'll watch it, and you'll be happy just sitting there, watch, watching your guy hang on to this thing. And it's it's an indescribable joy to just be like, wow, I, I'm riding a whale. It's less about, uh, you know, avoiding enemies or quick reflexes. In fact, there are no enemies in this game at all. Nothing can hurt you at all. There's no damage. There's Just no some help. scary, some genuinely scary looking fish in certain parts. Part of the joy of this game for, well, for me and for you, I know, has been playing the game with our own MP3s. Oh, yeah. And we have used that too. I think it's full <laughs> advantage today. We I have mean, abused it. That's yeah. what we did. We I mean, abused it. it. <laughs> yeah. Hey, how are you? I think that there's going to be a lot of appeal in a title like this for um, for creative types, though, because they're, these are truly the people who are going to flesh out their own experience. Right, like, exactly. They're going to have, you know, a wide variety of songs, you know, maybe like we had some IDM going, you yeah. know, we had a little bit of movie soundtrack, we did um, a little bit of a little bit of jazz, yeah. and I did like Herbie Hancock, and you know, yeah. you go through a nice, you know, wake up six in the morning, you know, in game time, and then dive, and boom, 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 boom. My girlfriend was asking me, is there any difference between, you know, putting your soundtrack on an uh, on an SD on SD media and playing it in the game versus muting the game and and playing the music on your own stereo and I found out very quickly and even you know we verified this here that once you mute the game sounds you lose that Darth Vader breathing and you lose that all the bubbling and stuff you, you take away a huge component of it it is yeah it's strangely like those little sound effects make it that much more atmospheric I've yeah. logged a lot like I'm, 14 and a half hours at least yeah yeah and I see something while you're playing, and I think, shit, I haven't found that yet. I gotta go back, I have to go back, I have to go swimming, I have to find that and identify it for myself. Totally. And not only that, but I have to go and find it three times. Right. Because I want all the information. You know, you can't get all that information from one dive. Your reward is a text window, mm -hmm. which is pretty interesting that, like, it works. And that, you know, if you're the type of person that's interested in underwater sea life, you can get a little bit of information out of it. For the stuff I've actually looked up myself, everything is factual except uh, the locations of them because everything is located in the fictional uh, Manoa Le Sea. Right. So uh, it'll say, you know, this can be found in the, the abyss year around, but you know, the abyss is a location in the game. Right. But other than that, everything they talk about, you know, the coloration, the difference between the sex, the feeding habits. The length, um, the size. Length, all size, all that is, is like real stuff. Yeah. 
got the online multiplayer aspect, which, which we, we tried yeah, together. It was really cool. Yeah. And, I mean, um, aside from the like very limited uh, chat interface, which is like, you know, you kind of tap away on the D-pad and it gives mm -hmm. you a few dialogue options. Yeah. Very simple, like, wait, uh -huh. look here, uh, thanks. This is cool. This is cool. <laughs> yeah. Like, I wish, you know, you had chatting or something like that, but okay. I mean, All right. Well. I'm gonna have to. All right, I, I'm not sure if I if I disagree or agree with you on that. But uh -huh. originally, I thought yes, the communication is limited, and yeah. this is because Nintendo doesn't right. want us, you know, cursing at each other sure, or what I, have you. Yeah, right. But then I thought, what if you actually scuba dive? You actually have more communication between each other, you know, using this control pad, than you would actually have. You know, if you were actually scuba diving, because they wouldn't be able to hear anything you're saying. No, but of course you, know, you, you have could gestural. gesture. Yeah, it would right. Be all gestural commands. Yeah, so you can maybe use a light pen and draw an arrow to something, or you could say like, "Come here," or "Follow me," or something like that. Sure. And I found it to be pretty adequate. What I said when we we're playing it was what I still believe, which is this is the opposite of boring. You know, mm -hmm. like this game, I can understand how someone could pick it up, start playing, and be like, "Oh, this is this is fucking boring. I don't need to do this." Mm -hmm. I get it. That's fine, but. I really think if you're the type of person who, uh, well, one, w would, would like the idea of a game that would be relaxing, and two, like the idea of just experiencing a new environment, um, kind of like a vacation, you know, like mm -hmm. a, a vacation in a, on a game tape. If someone decided today, like, hey, I want to go diving, mm -hmm. or even more than just regular scuba diving, like deep sea scuba diving, and go, you know, visit the depths of the ocean, like, not everyone can go do that. This video game seems to at least give you a hint of what that might be like. I don't know, I'm really excited about the prospect of more of this genre of game. Yeah. So are you guys even Double May Cry fans? Like, David, you had you played all these games for the first time. I didn't have a PS2, I only had Xbox, so I never had a chance to really play the Double May Cry games. So when this one came along, I wanted to like go through, so I went through Double May Cry 1, 2, and 3 all last week. And over the weekend, I've been going through Double May Cry 4. When you play them back to back to back to back, it's really noticeable like how Dante's different. <laughs> You know, the first game was amazing. Everyone loved it. DMC 2 was not as good. And yeah. then DMC 3 was so hard, nobody could even play it. So it's weird for Devil May Cry 4, so much is riding on it, and I think they really got it all right. The difficulty, first of all, is perfect. It is, because it's totally easy in DMC yeah. 3. It starts yeah. out But starts DMC 3, of course, is statistically hard. Right. But it, once you beat the game, you unlock more difficulties. Then you can replay it, and you can get beaten by the enemies as much as you want. <laughs> The presentation is pretty amazing, like, especially the cutscenes are awesome. I think the graphics throughout are really, really good. Storytelling is much better than I expected. Like the cutscenes yeah. are actually interesting to watch and fairly, fairly well acted, fairly well written for, for, yeah, yeah. for Devil May Cry. <laughs> yeah, and the characters are actually somewhat interesting. Funny to figure an order official out for a stroll in a hellhole kind of place like this. Hellhole? Watch your words. <laughs> Just this foul mouth as I had heard through was true. As were the new ones concerning your. Demise. Don't you think that's a little harsh? Killing me because of the way I t -t 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 talk? 
Well, I think part of it is because you're playing as Nero, and yeah, as a protagonist, he's kind of a serious, like, endearing guy. You really care about his quest. He's very emo and, like, thoughtful. Buck, and then you, when, and when you get to Dante, he's insane, and he's, like, going on these long, like, like soliloquies about his dick. Hero, um, one of the abilities of his arm is that like grappling thing. It's yeah, yeah. kind of like a Bionic Commando Lost Planet style gameplay thing, and it allows for more platforming, and it really opened up like how I was traversing through the level. I was surprised there were a lot of platforming elements. Yeah, just more that, platforming. Uh, the level filled with lasers. I found the platforming very refreshing and like it added a lot to the game. Well, yeah. you know, I like the sequences where you can kind of slow down time and that would affect yeah. combat. That was really cool and interesting. And, and you know, and the role-playing stuff, like as always in Dove May Cry, you're upgrading your abilities, you're unlocking new stuff, it encourages you to keep playing and fight enemies, because that's the problem. In a lot of games, there's no reason to fight enemies. In this game, you have a reason to have combat with regular enemies. I know everyone's like Nero's for noobs and all this shit, but I don't know, using the Devil Brigand, there's so many ways you can use it, interestingly, to keep your combos going. Like it really felt like Dante was kind of a step back from a combat perspective. Well, no, but did you mess with like the different styles? I mean, yeah, I mean, I would switch. You really, they like, tried Royal Guard, you tried Trickster, you tried these different styles. But yeah, yeah, different Gunslinger weapons. and then this Devil is, Guard. This is from David, who's who just this it's first true. time. It's true. Yeah, brand, yeah. Okay, so. so I think for real Demi Cry fans, when you finally get Dante again, you're like, you're given everything. You have all the styles, you have all these cool weapons, and it's, it's just a huge overload of options. Like people who think the combat isn't deep. They're, ins they're insane. It's like the deepest combat well, ever. Well, it could be as deep as you want it to be. It could just be a straight up button masher, and you can still do relatively well. You barely even have time in the game to realize what, what Dante's capable of. That's why you have to play it again. So why are you focusing on da Dante so much? Well, he's the star. But you should focus on Nero, first yeah, of all. Nero's the star of this game. Yeah. Like David just found this awesome trick video where you can air counts in the air, keep on going up. Like a air yeah, yeah. Just well, keep knocking them. Like the Devil Bringer has a lot of uses that aren't apparent at first. If you're used to playing as Dante, you, you won't even want to, want to use it at the beginning. You don't have to. And the game feels kind of slow and limited because you don't have all those moves that Dante has. I didn't like it when I was playing not Dante. And this is I played DMC one, DMC three, beat DMC one on Devil May Die mode. And I was like, wait, why am I playing Dante? I've spent so much effort playing Nero. I got so accustomed to playing Nero. Now I have to switch styles. And just I'm fumbling through controller, trying to switch styles, and it was just like it was incongruous to me. Oh. The Pandora weapon is the coolest weapon oh, it's in very any cool. Devil May Cry ever. The mini game of having to like input these different motions on the analog stick to keep transforming it is like a really deep and complex new way to approach like guns in this game. In order to use it, there's a long startup time. Most people won't use it. I, I, I was able to use it effectively against bosses. Like during regular combat, Try not so much. On hard mode, when the bosses are way tougher. Try it. The core strategy is run up to the boss, dodge it, slash it, then use the Yamato, or you just use the Devil Trigger to increase your attacks. Yeah. Well, but if, you, yeah. If, you're, if you're spending so much time in the Pandora's box, you don't have time to do anything. You're stuck in the animation, and you can't cancel it. Okay. It's like almost like Lost Planet. Okay, speaking about bosses, get ready to fight every boss three times through your first playthrough of the game. Typical of Japanese action games is you fight them all twice. In this one, you fight them all thrice. Where Capcom decided to make you fight these bosses again as Dante, they're just cakewalk. I mean, they're not even like real bosses. It's like a regular fight almost, you know? Right. And because of that, the repetition isn't as horrible and damaging to this game as people might think. When you hear you fight the bosses three times, it's still fun. And Dante can like whip their ass so quickly that, that shows you the difference between Nero and Dante's gameplay. Dante. I don't think you're playing Nero. Correctly. Yeah, I don't think you're playing him right because there were- Do you ever use the instant rev? Yeah. Really, every combo you do, everything that affects your style points, to get like instant a, rev. Instant hit, the, the best hit on the rev, like that, that's kind of hard. That timing but is that's hard. that's instant rev. That's right. the whole point right. of instant right. rev. I mean, every average, time. The average player won't be able to do that. I've been doing it. You're nope. a Devil May Cry expert, dude. I've been, I've been able to do David, it. Like, right. Not every time, but I can do it pretty consistently, like one or yeah. two times in the middle no, of the like crucial like, for the gameplay. First... Instant Rev is such a meta game of itself. Yeah. I, I, I it find it compulsively kind of doing me of, it every it, time. It kind of reminded me of Gears of War when you get the uh, active reload, and it's like mm -hmm. all timing based. It really reminded me of that. 
know, there's some cool environments, some surprising twists, and there's so many unlockables and so many reasons to replay that there's a there's actually a lot of length. In it. The difficulty ramps up well. You should play it through normal the first time and then switch to hard. It's enough substance for the hardcore gamers, and it's definitely good pace for the casual gamer. Yeah. yeah. At a very core level, I think the gameplay of, of Devil May Cry 4 is maybe the best action adventure hack and slash gameplay I've ever seen. More so than Ninja Gaiden, which before was my like high watermark pinnacle. Just the, the amount of moves at your disposal, the amount of style, and like the way it encourages you to play stylusy, I think it's second to none. Your deadline's gonna be a little bit past ours. If you give it to us early, we can put videos online and everything. Are you that new guy at game videos? I don't know who you are. I'm the, yes, I'm the it producer. It doesn't matter, we that need this for EGM. There are already videos online. Our guys in Japan, Mark and John, they already well, have I that, know. dude. Leave us alone, we need our copy, dude. Just go watch kidding me, shit, really? What the fuck am I talking to you for? Go talk to your boss, whoever, whoever you are. Dude, what the fuck, they already Holy have it? shit. Nice. Are you kidding me? Nobody fucking tells me anything. I know, we're always the last to know. Well, shit. What have I been doing all day? I honestly don't know. Well, we should just get them to cover it then. That's not a bad idea.